He was deployed in September of 2008. They contact the wife first, and then they went to my ex-husband's house who lives close to them. He didn't tell me on the phone when he called me why he wanted me to come over. Of course, in the back of my mind was just saying, please don't let it be Ben. I just kept trying to think of other reasons why, I, why he would want me to come over. But as soon as I drove down the street and I saw the black vehicles, I knew what it was. I didn't want to go in the house and hear them say those words to me. It's like someone just kicks you in the gut and you literally, you can't even breathe. I just fell to the ground and I was screaming and, and, I, and I feel like I was hysterically crying and I just kept saying, this can't be real, this can't be true. This just can't be true. He was 22. Ben was a very sweet, easygoing baby, but always very goofy and tried to always pull one over on us and was very much of a scam artist <laughs> from, from a very young age. But he was a very sweet baby. I know that he truly loved me. We were very close in a way that most parents aren't with their adolescent teenagers. He was a big kid. So he would always just come and hug me and hold me, and it was just this special bond that we had. After he graduated from high school, he, you know, got a little wayward. So there was a little friction there. We still always had that bond of the love and, and his, you know, like a, he could just charm me. But I do remember some intense conversations and some debates about what was he going to do and his life it took on more of a serious nature, our relationship, just before he joined the Army. I don't really know where he got his fascination with the military, but he started watching the military channel probably when he was like a freshman in high school. He became fascinated with the technology. He started putting military screensavers on his computer and reaching out to recruiters and stuff. We had recruiters contacting us when he was very young. For me, there was a period of time where I was frozen, basically just numb. I had to allow myself to start thawing out and to actually start feeling the pain. Two and a half years into it, I took the report that I received from the Army and I read that report. And that's when I started <laughs> really feeling it. I really was able to read and see what actually happened to, to Ben. It was the first time I'd actually started really grieving. So the process is just an ongoing process for the rest of our lives. We find a new way to, to live and to move on and to have a productive life because that's what our sons would want. But I also find ways to honor him in every way that I can. So that's what keeps me going, is just knowing that I have an outlet to talk about him, to have folks remember him and the sacrifice that he made. Mac was nine months old when Ben was killed. We tell Mac about Ben whenever we can. I think for him, it's more about a legacy as opposed to missing his father. Natalie, she really, really had a very hard time in the very beginning. She had a very loving family and friends to support her who came and took care of the baby and helped raise him. And then as time went on, she finished her schooling and she went back to work. I would like Ben to be remembered as the goofy, funny, big-hearted, wonderful, sweet, compassionate guy that he was. He loved his friends and his family more than anything. He loved Natalie. He loved Mac more than he loved anything. 
and obviously remember the sacrifice that he made. 